This is Mikel Merino. He has won the UEFA Nations League, Euros, Spanish Super Cup and German Cup. He even scored an incredible header against Germany which sent Spain to the Euro semi-finals. In fact, he's Europe's top dueler, winning more duels last season than anyone else. And that's not all. Merino is also Europe's best header of the ball, winning 50 plus more than Suchek and Havertz, while also surpassing Virgil van Dijk. Yet, nobody rates him. This had to change. So, I decided to fix it. I started my research by googling his name. But that got more results for sheep. Not good. Researching further, I found that he started his career in Spain. At Osasuna to be precise where he made his senior debut in 2013. Merino's father also played for Osasuna and coached them too. Merino then moved to Germany in 2016, where he signed for Borussia Dortmund on a five-year deal. His time at the club was promising, but nothing to write home about. In 2017, Merino moved again, this time to England, to play for Newcastle United. He had a decent spell at the club, before transferring to Real Sociedad in Spain, the motherland, in 2018. At Sociedad, Merino would find his feet, becoming one of the league's best players while playing alongside great talents like Alexander Isak and Martin Odegaard. Odegaard, remember that name because it seems Merino's next destination is... Arsenal in North London. In fact, the North London club is taking the final steps to seal the Mikel Merino deal. So how would Arsenal line up with him? Out of possession, Arsenal line up in a 4-4-2 block with two central midfielders forming a double pivot in midfield, Merino and Declan Rice. Two six foot two monsters in the middle of the park. Here's a picture of Merino's 2023-2024 La Liga heat map. You can see he has a slight bias towards the left hand side of the pitch. Now here is a side by side comparison of his heat map to Declan Rice's. And you can see that Arsenal will be lining up with two Mustangs in midfield. Merino covered the most distance for Real Sociedad in their recent UCL run. So don't let his calm approach fool you. Merino has a wicked engine. Did I also tell you that Merino is a bully? He grabs the ball from opponents like you will grab candy from a kid. He uses his limbs to slightly destabilize his opponents. And this is nice. It's a nasty edge of his, but I like it. I like the way he uses his power and size to sometimes outmaneuver his opponents force turnovers and win the ball back. It's almost similar to his Spanish compatriot, Rodri. I like defensive midfielders that are almost guaranteed of the ball when they're in close proximity to their opponent, almost using their magnetism to reclaim possession. Merino is also a great tackler, using his powerful spidery legs to his advantage. I like footballers' legs. They can tell you a lot about the professional. And Merino has thick, powerful thighs and well-built calf muscles, especially for someone his size and someone his height at six foot two. Those legs make Merino a solid tackler, strong on his feet, and he only goes to ground when necessary. Merino is in the 93rd percentile for tackles in the world, 99th percentile for ground duels contested, and 99th percentile for ground duels won. Incredible. Merino is also very press resistant. Sure, he doesn't drop his shoulder like Thomas Partey would to beat people for fun and knock the ball around the park, but Merino has a 360 degree awareness of his surroundings. On the ball, he generates quick answers to pressing situations, and I like the way he does this. He particularly likes La Croqueta. It's basically a skill where you move the ball from one foot to the other to evade pressure. This was Andres Iniesta's signature move and he became very popular for using it, but 
Maybe it's a Spanish thing, eh? But Merino seems to like it. I like his calmness in these situations. He exudes total confidence in his abilities when he's pressed. He doesn't do the wrong things and he doesn't rush things. To me, his dribbling is very advanced because he only pulls it off when it is absolutely necessary and he doesn't wander around seeking an adversary to beat on the dribble. Passing, that is the Spanish claim to fame. It's in his DNA. Merino has a 76.5% pass completion rate. What's that? I hear you complaining that it is too low. Well, let me explain. He's in the 91st percentile for line breaking passes in all of Europe, 95th percentile for passes in the opponent's half, and 91st percentile for passes in the final third. You see, Merino does not pass for the sake of it. He does not pass to tick completion boxes, but actually tries to hurt the opposition as much as possible with his passing. You would see him do things like this. Spraying the ball from the heart of the pitch. Those daggers he sprays from the middle of the pitch through the opposition do lots of damage and he is an expert at this. It would actually be interesting to see him find Arsenal's runner in behind with those deep over the top deliveries directly played into the winger's feet. And I'm talking about Martinelli. Martinelli could really enjoy this guy. So keep an eye out for that link up. It's just a hunch I'm getting, that's all. Merino also has a knack for those high IQ quick layoffs and combinations in and around the penalty area, or just outside of it. So expect him to be adventurous here. He wants to play the runner in behind, combine with second and third men, and get the attack rolling. He's got a good technical base, a willingness to help his teammates. Very interesting tools on the table here. A good 4-3-3 has three elements in midfield. One, a destroyer, the most defensive member of the setup, usually located at the base. Two, the tempo setter slash box to box, the team's stabilizer in possession, with an engine to roam box to box if necessary. Three, the volume creator, this is the creative mastermind of the entire team. Together, all three members form a perfectly balanced midfield setup, and this is why the Busquets, Xavi, and Iniesta trident was so lethal. Arsenal want to establish this, with Declan Rice being the team's destroyer at the base, Martin Odegaard being the creative mastermind, and Mikel Merino being the team's stabilizer that can roam box to box when needed. Last season, Arteta said this when Arsenal narrowly missed out on the title. Efficiency in the box was a dictator of success. Keep that in mind as we go through all Merino's goals last season. Five goals in La Liga in the box, one goal at the Euros in the box, one goal at the Copa del Rey in the box, two goals in the Champions League in the box, one goal in the Euro qualifiers in the box. Do you notice the pattern yet? Merino helps Arsenal be more dangerous, finishing chances in the box. Good stuff tends to fall at his feet and he usually eats these things up. Thus, the rumours that Arsenal want to use him in a more advanced position are very interesting. However, box efficiency is not only executed on the ground. We already know that Merino is Europe's top guy in the air, but sometimes I'm awestruck by how monstrous the Spaniard really is. And get this, he is a set-piece demon. Honestly, picturing him as part of Arsenal's set-piece routines next season is mouth-watering because the Gunners are already the world's best team at set-pieces, strictly based off last season's data. Arsenal are buying an extra coach on the pitch in Merino, a model professional and journeyman with tremendous experience that can help the Gunners. Luis de la Fuente, the Spanish national team coach, once said this, For me, Carvajal, Rodri, Merino and Orethabal are players who you tell things to, 
and you see that they quickly understand what you are asking of them. Merino could help Arsenal do what they desire the most, which is to win now. But there's an extra benefit. Merino has maybe three to four good years left at the highest level. And this is actually a good thing because he allows Arsenal prioritize the growth of the promising youngsters that are going to become men in the background. People like Juan Yeri and Luis Skerry. Merino takes all the bullets Arsenal would face now from this war against Pep Guardiola. Sit down! Nobody talk! Sit down! Perhaps this underrated midfielder from Spain finally delivers the 14th league title they so desperately crave.